The other thing that a fork crane can do um, is resolve and sort of propel motion toward the dominant chord, 557. Five, okay? Um, which is a different function than we've talked about thus far. Um, this would be what we call the four chord in this case would be a predominant chord. If four resolves to five or five seven, dominant. It, it is moving the motion towards the dominant, what we call predominant function. Um, and there are a variety of chords that have predominant function. Okay, so what I'm going to do, as we have before, is take a particular melodic backbone. And we've been looking, last time we started looking at three, four, three, two, one. And when we first started looking at this melodic backbone, we harmonized that with one and five seven chords, which raised the discussion of incomplete and complete five seven chords. Early in a phrase, a five seven chord tends to be incomplete. The part writing works out if the chord here is incomplete. The complete five seven containing all four notes works best in terms of part writing at the cadence and in sort of its natural resolution would resolve to the incomplete one chord, right? And of course we'll, we'll do these in C. An incomplete chord we learn omits the fifth. So for the incomplete 5-7 in the key of C, G, B, D, F, a D would be omitted. For the incomplete one chord, C, E, G, the G would be omitted. Okay, and then we'll go back and, and look again how this chord could be complete, the Bach Chi that we talked about. Okay, so just to part write this up real quick. So if I have the melody three, four, three, two, one, and the harmonization one, five, seven, one, five, seven, one. Again, part writing my first chord with the appropriate spacing. Between the soprano and altos, altos and tenors, the appropriate doubling of the root here. Okay, um, moving then to my incomplete one chord here. Once we have the melody and the bass line, if I've given you the melody within that backbone, and then certainly the bass note depending on the chord that we're part writing and the inversion of that chord. Right, the bass note's a given. Um, once you have at least the bass note and then possibly the melody note established as well. The next thing to think about, and this is where students tend to run into some problems with part writing, is to go back to the previous chord and resolve the previous chord by its function. Okay, So the tonic chord is what we call a tonic function chord. And tonic function chords tend to resolve by, most typically by, Step. well, mm -hmm. common tone. Common Remember, common yeah, common. So if you have a tonic chord, we're looking for common tones, typically. We will get to the exceptions. But right now, in terms of basic part writing, where there is a common tone that tends to be held coming from a tonic chord. And of course, between the 1 and the 5-7 in scale degree 5, the G in the key of C, that's the common tone. So once we have the bass, likely the melody set, if I've given you that as part of the backbone, and then we've resolved by the function of the previous chord, then we usually have either all our notes, or often three of four, um, and then we can figure out, by default, B is the missing note here, right? Okay, and so that, again, moving by step where we can. Um, so then resolving the 5-7 chord, again, my bass is set by the Roman numeral in the root position. The third of the chord is appearing, or scuttery three is appearing in the soprano, because again, that's the melodic contour that we are looking at. Um, so we go back and resolve the 5-7 chord by its function, and dominant chords resolve by sensitive pitch. For 5-7 chords, that's 7 to 1, 4 to 3. So 7 here in the tenor resolves to category 1. And of course, I've, I've gone ahead, that's in your soprano here, but 4 does resolve to 3. Does that make sense? Okay. And then so for our chord here, I have two C's and an E, so obviously the remaining note I need is the G. Okay? Now the complete 5-7 chord, G, B, D, F, I need all four notes. I already have the G in the bass. I already have 
the D in the soprano. This will actually mean with the B and the F, I'm not going to keep the common tone here. The B will be here, the F will be here, because that's easiest. But remember that this F is created as the passing tone, right? I mean, originally this was a G, passing tone F, E, but we pulled the passing tone back in the chord. So even though there's not a specific common tone held here, which we would expect, historically that common tone was held, and then we had the passing tone. Remember where the 5-7 chord comes from. So that's the complete one, then? Yeah, this is the complete 5-7. Okay, and then in resolving the complete five seven seven to one four to three to three, and that gives us the incomplete chord with the fifth omitted. We did discuss last time that um, uh, there is what I call the Bach cheat. Bach, among other composers, came up with sort of a part writing variant that gives you the complete chord at the end, and that involves in an inner voice. 7 to 5, right? Bach will typically, if it's in an inner voice, not if it's in the soprano, because it would sound weird in the soprano, but in an inner voice, will bring scalpel 7 down to 5 so that you get the complete chord, what I call the Bach cheat. So for the dominant 7, 7 to 1, 4 to 3, unless at the cadence you're doing the Bach cheat 7 to 5 to get the complete to complete. Five, oh, seven, so then you use instead of seven to one, you use seven to five. Seven to five, yeah. Okay, so that is acceptable. Um, if you end on the complete chord, then then seven to five is down, resolves down, right? Yeah, okay. like that. And of course, if you're going to add the plagal cadential extension for one, which is what we we're looking at last time, you actually need this complete chord to make that work best. Of course, one's going to be held over in the soprano as the common tone, right? Mm -hmm. And for an F A C with F in the bass C in the soprano, I need an A and another F, which will become neighbor tones in the typical one four one progression, which is why we call this tonic expansion, because it's basically like a neighbor chord that simply moves from the tonic and back. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you're gonna add playful conditional extension, it is worth noting. This chord ought to be complete. It has to be. Yeah, it, it works best. And that's well, what happened if it wasn't. Well, if it wasn't, then you would... It's not the end of the world. You'd kind of have this awkward leap here. doesn't look as good. You lose the neighbor tones. So, that's you know, so typically, that's where the Bach cheat really helps because you end up with a complete chord here. 7 to 5. Yeah. Okay. So what we want to talk about today is that the 4 chord can be used to propel harmonic motion towards the 5-7, the incomplete 5-7 early in the phrase, or the complete 5-7 at the cadence. And one way to think about this, you know, we've been talking about sort of different sort of embellishments, the addition of, you know, the creation of 5-7 came about via a passing tone uh, pattern in, in one of the inner voices here. Um, you know, even this sort of early embellishment of the melody, either it sort of moves up to four from three, or we looked earlier at melodies that came down to two before going to three, but, you know, sort of various neighbor tone patterns that are created within melody and then harmonized with the five or five seven chord. What the four chord does as a predominant chord is embellish the bass line, okay? And this will make a lot of sense if playing electric bass or, or tubas or string bass players will recognize this sort of pattern. If our basic melody line is one, five, one, five, one, and if we add the ah, four, and one, right, if we add that at the end. Well, a way to sort of embellish a bass line instead of one, five, one, is to create a little appoggiatura kind of motion that goes, instead of one, five, one, one, four, five, one, which is probably the simplest sort of baseline embellishment, if you think about it. But I mean, that ought to resonate with people who have played bass instruments or singing bass. Um, the idea of one, four, five, one, right? That's a typical sort of baseline embellishment. Um, and the t and harmonization, there's other options, but the most typical harmonization, perhaps, particularly in pop music, would be the use of the four chord here. 
likely. So, in other words, we can embellish our baseline with this little appoggiatura. One, four, five, one, right? Both early in the phrase resolving to the incomplete five, seven, and late in the phrase resolving at the cadence to the complete five, seven, okay? Um, figuring out the part range from this one chord to this four chord, Again, I have my bass note set. I don't have a prescribed melody note here, um, but I at least have my bass note set, and at that point, go back to the function of the previous chord and resolve it by its function, which again, this is a tonic chord. Tonic chords tend to resolve by common tone, mm -hmm. and the common tone in the key of C between the tonic chord and the subdominant four chord would be what? What's the tonic, what's the common tone? C. C, yeah, because we have C, E, G for the tonic chord and F, A, C for the subdominant right. chord. So the C being the common tone, we would anticipate being held. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And so once you've done that, you can sort of do an inventory of what notes you have, figure out what you have left. I need another F and an A, given an E and a G. What's the easiest way to get those notes? Move by step. Yeah, move by step. The G would move to A, the F would move up. Yeah, yeah. F. And then this shows you what that resolution would look like moving into the incomplete 5 7 chord. There is a common tone, mm -hmm. right? And then the essence of predominant chords predominant chords tend to resolve most commonly by contrary motion. Whereas the bass, 4 5, is moving up, it's that upward resolution of the appoggiatura, right? The other voices, to the exception of the common tone held here, tend to resolve it down. down, right? And if you look at various predominant chords and their resolution to the 5-7 um, um, chord, um, that's what's typical, that contrary motion. And we're going to see that, in fact, here at the very end. Again, if I'm resolving from this tonic to this four chord, I have my bass note set. C. So again, we resolve by the function. We anticipate the common tone held, and then these voices will move by step. And here, at the cadence, resolving to the complete 5-7 chord, right, the bass still moves up. All voices move down. Okay. Does that make sense? So, and, th and this is one thing to sort of step back and observe. When the four chord resolves to the incomplete five seven early in a phrase, the common tone contrary is held. Motion. Well, the con yeah, the common tone is held, and then voices move contrary. At the cadence, where the all voices move contrary, does that make sense? From the incomplete to the complete. Yeah, from the four to the complete five seven. Mm -hmm. So that is, you know, sort of a quirky thing to keep in mind. The four chord can hold the common tone, and we would anticipate that with the incomplete five seven early in the phrase. At the cadence. The common tone tends not to be held because of the overall shape of the melody coming down to scattery to here. Does that make sense? Okay. And so there's the sort of anticipated progressions and the melodic shape of a melody using predominant four chords, both to the incomplete 5 7 and the complete 5 7. I'll play that for you so you can hear it. So we are in the key of C. <laughs> from the other harmonies 1 and 5 and 5-7 five, that we've studied thus far, the four chord has two different functions, depending on context. It can be a tonic expansion chord if it resolves back to 1. It can also be a predominant chord if it resolves to 5-7. Does that make sense? So it's just in the context. Where is 4 resolving? If it's resolving to 5-7, five, five. it's a predominant chord resolving by like contrary motion. It's not going yeah, to. Yeah, if it's a tonic expansion chord resolving to one, then like the tonic chord, tonic expansion chords tend to resolve by common tone, tonic, tonic expansion. 
And which one's the tonic expansion? Tonic expansion is the four chord here as oh, it resolves to one. Okay. It's a chord that comes from the one chord and then resolves back to the one chord, basically expanding or prolonging the sense of the tonic chord. 